Now we look at the Wan Hao Duplicator i3 Plus. This Duplicator 3D printer is a Cartesian i3 style machine from Wan Hao, a Far East company in China. It has a 220 by 220 by 180 millimeter build volume, has an aluminum heated bed, a direct drive extruder with a Mark 10 type nozzle, an LCD touchscreen, and an all sheet metal frame. Now this printer comes in a lot of different iterations and versions. This is a power spec version by Wen Hao because it came from Micro Center. There's also a mono price version and a Cocoon Create, as well as others, I'm sure. Also, it's been around a long time. In fact, Angus was doing videos on this back in 2015. So if this printer's aged out already, why do a review on it? Well, because they still sell this machine, and I wanted to see how it stacked up to the machines they offer today. And that's what I intend to do. So let's start with things that I like about this 3D printer. First up, the touchscreen. It has quite a few options, but it does like to come up in Chinese quite often. To correct that, you can just go to the first key over here and go to the top one in the corner. Now we're back to English. Again, a pretty nice feature. Not a ton of things on it, but you can get around with it. Also, the type of material they use for their build sheet. I put this one through the ringer and it didn't rip. So kudos for that. Probably the biggest benefit to this printer is it's all out construction. This frame is super solid and heavy. There is a little bit of slop on the gantry, but nothing too serious. You could correct it fairly easy. Another nice thing is this printer prints really quiet. They even went the extra mile and added some motor dampeners. Now we could go through a lot of things I don't like about this printer, like this spool holder on top. It adds too much weight to the top of the printer and I wouldn't use it. But instead, let's walk through my user experience with it. And I've had a lot of failures, a lot of it revolving around the extruder, but as we go through, you'll get the gist. This is the first print off this 3D printer. Granted, I was printing PETG at PLA temps, and that was my fault, but still, even then, didn't come out so great. Now onto the second print. This one was printed at the correct temperature. We still have major issues here with extrusion. Something is definitely going on. So on a Mark 10 type nozzle, you have your nozzle that a PTFE tube actually fits inside. So it goes all the way down to the hole. So it fits something like this. And then the rest of this tube runs through the heat block and the barrel. Now if this tube is oddly shaped, too short or too long, you're going to get gaps or you're going to get binding from the filament. And that's exactly what was happening to this 3D printer. So I pulled the whole nozzle apart, I recut and added a piece of PTFE tube, and then I tried again. So a few test prints later, I was able to achieve this Minchie. Not the best one I've ever seen, but not horrible either. A lot of stringing, probably printed a little bit too hot, but you'll notice a little bit of waviness down in here, and that really wasn't apparent until later. Feeling pretty confident, I tried this vase. It came out pretty well. And then I tried this Yoda, and here's where I started to see some issues. You'll definitely notice some noisy stepper drivers in here, as well as some skip layers and inconsistencies. You'll start to see just a little bit of under extrusion again. And that's where things kind of went off the rails and I started to troubleshoot. I tried all kinds of different things. Different extruder gears, different extruder springs, I stretched the stock spring out, I tried a 3D printed extruder arm that was adjustable, that worked for a little while, I tried a different motor. I also fooled around with firmware and slicer settings trying to get it to print better. And then I went to voltage on the main board. And that's where things got just a little bit sideways. My extruder stepper driver voltage was around 0.8 volts, so I decided to bring it up just a little bit. And when I went to adjust it, I ended up with this. The driver burned a hole right through the main board. Honestly, I don't know if it was my fault, a bad driver, a bad board but I did buy a replacement board from Wanhao because I wanted to continue testing and figure out what was going on here. So after a couple of weeks, I swapped the board out and I continued the testing. And I was still getting missed layers, but it was in a different way. So after the board swap, I started testing again. And at the start of the prints, they go pretty well. You start to see some skipped layers here and there, but then by the end of the print, it's just printing air. It stopped printing altogether. And when I see something like that, the first thing I think is heat creep. And heat creep can be pretty challenging to fix, especially on this type of extruder where your motor is so close to the hot end. I tried a different hot end fan, that didn't help. I tried to check the thermistor to make sure it was somewhat accurate, and it was pretty close to my thermal couple, so that wasn't an issue. 
a user told me to try thermal paste on all the metal surfaces, and that did help some, but it only bought me just a little bit more time in the print. It still eventually failed. I also adjusted the extruder to a voltage as low as I could go to save on heat, still no luck. So I went all in with one last mod to try to get this fixed once and for all. So I ordered an all aluminum extruder arm and plate from Micro Swiss. Not only does this grip the filament better, but it adds to the thermal mass. So with the added mass of the extruder plate sandwiched in between the arm and the heat sink with some thermal paste and the fan, I was able to get the heat creep down to a minimum. And the prints since then have turned out pretty well. You do still have some driver noise, maybe you could put some TL smoothers on it or something to try to help, but that's probably just the quality of the driver. This is probably the best print that you're going to get out of this machine. So after that, it was printing well, so I could finally start looking at the machine to see what it was lacking and what could be done better. And that's the great thing about this machine and it having so much age in the community. There's tons of mods available if you wanted to mod it out. But here's just a few things that I see. The first thing is, these belts come with a spring adjuster, the clothespin type, and you can easily just pull those off, cut the zip ties, and stretch it yourself and get a much better fit. So definitely do that or print out an adjuster of some type. And you definitely need more part cooling on this machine. Your prints could look so much better with just a little bit of adjustment. You either need to rework this duct, find one that already exists, or use a blower type fan. That would be a huge upgrade for this. Onto the bed plate. This is a very thin piece of sheet metal down here and it has a lot of flex. There are companies that offer a much thicker one of these and that would probably be a great mod for this. I think if this was just a little bit stiffer, you'd see a lot less of that noise in your model. And then after that, I'd probably find a way to make this frame just a little bit stiffer. If I move this around, it definitely has some give to it. You could probably add some bars to stiffen this up. There's probably already a mod out there for it. And here's what it looks like underneath with the cover off. You have the Melzy type main board. You have a 24 volt power supply. Now it would be a big undertaking to upgrade the main board on this because of that touch screen. There is firmware available for it. For the most part, this one's okay, but those drivers aren't great quality. I did try a 3D printed belt adjuster down here for the Y belt with some success. And after all the adjustments and modifications, this is the 3D print test that you can expect. Not too bad. Overhangs are just okay, need some more part cooling, but it really didn't come out all that bad. As with most 3D printers, a community can make it a lot better. And this one's no exception. There's a ton of information out there, including parts, mods, even a version of firmware that allows you to keep your touch screen. So if you have one of these, definitely check it out. Now we've seen the printer. I've had to throw some money at mine to get it to print decent. Is it still valid for 2019? I would say no. These still go for $350 US in Micro Center stores. I'm sure you can get them cheaper online, but the market being what it is with sub $200 3D printers that print right out of the box, there's just no room for this printer. Wan Hao would have to do something a lot different to even compete. I purchased this printer with my own funds, all opinions expressed are my own, and I have not been in contact with Micro Center or Wan Hao on this machine. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.